Welcome back. I'm Logan, your host for the Daily Bible Reading Podcast, where we are journeying through the Bible chronologically, taking it one day at a time. Today is day number 175, and we are continuing our look at the split of the kingdom after Solomon's death. We looked yesterday at the version of the story from 1 Kings, which gives more weight to Jeroboam's story in the north. Today we will look at 2 Chronicles chapter 10 through 12 to see what happened in the south with Rehoboam, Solomon's son. But before we begin, let's pray. Today's prayer comes from the book The Valley of Vision by Arthur Bennett. This prayer is entitled, self-knowledge. Searcher of hearts, it is a good day to me when thou givest me a glimpse of myself. Sin is my greatest evil, but thou art my greatest good. I have cause to loathe myself and not to seek self-honor, for no one desires to commend his own dunghill. My country, my family, church, fare worse because of my sins. For sinners bring judgment in thinking sins are small, or that God is not angry with them. Let me not take other good men as my example, and think that I am good because I am like them. For all good men are not so good as thou desirest, are not always consistent, do not always follow holiness, do not feel eternal good in sore affliction. Show me how to know when a thing is evil which I think is right and good, how to know when what is lawful comes from an evil principle, such as desire for reputation or wealth by usury. Give me grace to recall my needs, my lack of knowing thy will in scripture, of wisdom to guide others, of daily repentance, want of which keeps thee at bay, of the spirit of prayer, having words without love, of zeal for thy glory, seeking my own ends, of joy in thee and thy will, of love to others. And let me not lay my pipe too short of the fountain, never touching the eternal spring, never drawing down water from above. Today we want to pray for the Godoberi peoples of the Dagestan region of Russia. How many people live in your town? Your town's probably more populous than the entire population of Godoberi people, about 3,100 people. The Godoberi people are Sunni Muslims, practicing a mix of Islam and their traditional religion, and their main occupations include horticulture and cattle production. They come from an ancient people who settled in Dagestan probably eight or nine centuries before Jesus Christ. There are no Jesus-following Godoberi recorded so far, therefore any outreach will need to begin at the foundational level. The Godoberi speak their own language, Godoberi but some speak Russian as well. We pray that Jesus would reveal himself to them through dreams and visions. Along with horticulture, the Godoberi also tend vines and keep beehives, and Jesus identifies himself as the vine and we are the branches. We pray that the Godoberi people of mountainous Russia would learn of the one and only life-giving vine. We pray, O oh God, that you would call people to share the gospel with the Godoberi, that a movement to Christ would begin and flourish with them. We pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. All right, let's see how this story plays out in Second Chronicles. I've got my Bible open and ready. Let's go. Chapter 10 Rehoboam went to Shechem. For all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. And as soon as Jeroboam the son of Nebat heard it, for he was in Egypt where he had fled from King Solomon, then Jeroboam returned from Egypt. And they sent and called him. And Jeroboam and all Israel came and said to Rehoboam, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now therefore lighten the hard service of your father and his heavy yoke on us, and we will serve you. He said to them, Come to me again in three days. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men, who had stood before Solomon his father while he was yet alive, saying, How do you advise me to answer this people? And they said to him, If you will be good to this people, and please them, and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. 
But he abandoned the counsel that the old men gave him, and took counsel with the young men who had grown up with him and stood before him. And he said to them, What do you advise that we answer this people who have said to me, Lighten the yoke that your father put on us? And the young men who had grown up with him said to him, Thus shall you speak to the people who said to you, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you lighten it for us. Thus shall you say to them, My little finger is thicker than my father's thighs. And now, whereas my father laid on you a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king said, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered them harshly, and forsaking the counsel of the old men, King Rehoboam spoke to them according to the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to it. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will discipline you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people. For it was a turn of affairs brought about by God, that the Lord might fulfill his word, which he spoke by Ahijah the Shilonite, to Jeroboam the son of Nebat. And when all Israel saw that the king did not listen to them, the people answered the king, What portion have we in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. Each of you to your tents, O Israel, look now to your own house, David. So all Israel went to their tents. But Rehoboam reigned over the people of Israel, who lived in the cities of Judah. Then Rehoboam sent Hadaram, who was taskmaster over the forced labor, and the people of Israel stoned him to death with stones. And King Rehoboam quickly mounted his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. Chapter 11 when Rehoboam came to Jerusalem, he assembled the house of Judah and Benjamin, a hundred and eighty thousand chosen warriors, to fight against Israel, to restore the kingdom to Rehoboam. But the word of the Lord came to Shimeiah, the man of God, Say to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin, Thus says the Lord, You shall not go up or fight against your relatives. Return every man to his home, for this thing is from me. So they listened to the word of the Lord, and returned, and did not go against Jeroboam. Rehoboam lived in Jerusalem, and he built cities for defense in Judah. He built Bethlehem, Etam, Tekoa, Bethzer, Soko, Adolam, Gath, Marisha, Ziph, Adarim, Lachish, Azekah, Zorah, Aijalon, and Hebron, fortified cities that are in Judah and in Benjamin. He made the fortresses strong, and put commanders in them, and stores of food, oil, and wine. And he put shields and spears in all the cities, and made them very strong. So he held Judah and Benjamin. And the priests and the Levites who were in all Israel presented themselves to him from all places where they lived. For the Levites left their common lands and their holdings, and came to Judah and Jerusalem, because Jeroboam and his sons cast them out from serving as priests of the Lord, and he appointed his own priests for the high places, and for the goat idols, and for the calves that he had made. And those who had set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel came after them from all the tribes of Israel to Jerusalem to sacrifice to the Lord, the God of their fathers. They strengthened the kingdom of Judah, and for three years they made Rehoboam the son of Solomon secure, for they walked for three years in the way of David and Solomon. Rehoboam took his wife, Mahaloth, the daughter of Jeremoth the son of David, and of Abihel the daughter of Eliab the son of Jesse, and she bore him sons, Jeush, Shemariah, and Zaham. After her he took Maacah the daughter of Absalom, who bore him Abijah, Atai, Ziza, and Shelemith. Rehoboam loved Maacah, the daughter of Absalom, above all his wives and concubines. He took eighteen wives and sixty concubines, and fathered twenty-eight sons and sixty daughters. And Rehoboam appointed Abijah, the son of Maacah, as chief prince among his brothers, for he intended to make him king. And he dealt wisely, and distributed some of his sons through all the districts of Judah and Benjamin, in all the fortified cities, and he gave them abundant provisions, and procured wives for them. Chapter 12 When the rule of Rehoboam was established, and he was strong, he abandoned the law of the Lord, and all Israel with him. 
in the fifth year of King Rehoboam, because they had been unfaithful to the Lord, Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem with 1,200 chariots and 60,000 horsemen. And the people were without number who came with him from Egypt, Libyans, Sukiim, and Ethiopians. And he took the fortified cities of Judah and came as far as Jerusalem. Then Shimeiah the prophet came to Rehoboam and to the princes of Judah who had gathered at Jerusalem because of Shishak and said to them, Thus says the Lord, You abandoned me, so I have abandoned you to the hand of Shishak. Then the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves and said, The Lord is righteous. When the Lord saw that they had humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came to Shimeiah. They have humbled themselves. I will not destroy them but I will grant them some deliverance, and my wrath shall not be poured out on Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. Nevertheless, they shall be servants to him, that they may know my service and the service of the kingdoms of the countries. So Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. He took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took away everything. He also took away the shields of gold that Solomon had made. And King Rehoboam made in their place shields of bronze, and committed them to the hands of the officers of the guard, who kept the door of the king's house. And as often as the king went into the house of the Lord, the guard came and carried them, and brought them back to the guard room. And when he humbled himself, the wrath of the Lord turned from him, so as not to make a complete destruction. Moreover, conditions were good in Judah. So King Rehoboam grew strong in Jerusalem, and reigned. Rehoboam was forty-one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city that the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. His mother's name was Naamah the Ammonite, and he did evil, for he did not set his heart to seek the Lord. Now the acts of Rehoboam from first to last, are they not written in the chronicles of Shimeiah the prophet and of Iddo the seer? There were continual wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam, and Rehoboam slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David. And Abijah, his son, reigned in his place. If you're looking for encouragement for life's journey, a better understanding of the Bible, or an honest look at Scripture, check out the Christ-Centered Journey. I'm your host, Dan Shipton, and I'd like to invite you to check us out. Mondays through Fridays, we air new programs. It's a daily podcast that's built around building one another up as Christ followers in this journey we call life. So why don't you join us by looking us up on your podcasting host for the Christ-Centered Journey. So as we read the story of Rehoboam, and we see the way that he shirked the advice of the wise old counselors and listened to his young, impetuous friends, it's really easy to turn this into advice for young people or anyone to listen to their elders. And that's not bad advice. Although, elders are not always right or good, as we saw yesterday with the old prophet. The real test is wise counsel. But the point of this story isn't Rehoboam's foolishness in taking the wrong people's advice. Remember, all of this had been planned and prepared by God ahead of time. He had already told Jeroboam, through Ahijah the prophet, exactly what was going to happen. So there are a couple of options for how to look at this. First, maybe God simply looked into the future. I'm speaking figuratively because there is no future for God since he's everywhere all the time. So maybe he looked into the future and knew that Rehoboam would fail in this, and that would provide the opportunity for Jeroboam to take the ten northern tribes. But if that's the case, then the future was set before the events, and Rehoboam had no choice except to forsake the older men's counsel. Maybe, along those same lines, this wasn't just foreseen by God, but it was caused by God to ensure that his word was true. I mean, chapter 10, verse 15 in our reading today does say, The king did not listen to the people, for it was a turn of affairs brought about by God that the Lord might fulfill his word. That certainly sounds like it was God's plan for him to do this thing. But again, those that are big on human freedom and free will will say, But wait, God can't do that. What about Rehoboam's free will? 
Well, did you not listen in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1, where it says, The king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he will. I don't know about you, but I take comfort in the sovereignty of God. It tells me that whatever happens, even if it looks messy on the outside to me, it's still being planned and purposed by our Heavenly Father to accomplish His will. However, let's play this out and just imagine that Rehoboam does have the freedom to choose which of the counselors to go with, and he decides instead to choose the wise counsel of the older men. Perhaps it could have played out something like this. Then Rehoboam spoke to the people and proclaimed, My father was harsh with you, but I will give you rest from your labor. The people would cheer and go home in peace for the day, but then soon Rehoboam would need the people to assemble to fight against Shishak from Egypt or a king from another neighboring region or to build something. And the people would rebel and form a new nation under the strong leadership of Jeroboam because Rehoboam was a weak ruler and did not continue in the ways of his father. Do you see how that could still play out to be exactly what God had promised? So I don't want you to hear me and think that I'm just a fatalist and that everything is already preset so we have no responsibility. Absolutely not. Our responsibility is all over Scripture, but it always stands alongside God's sovereignty. God has the right to command of us what we cannot do. Just look at the law. We are incapable as fallen human beings of keeping the law. However, we are still held accountable for our failure to keep it. We're trapped by the law, as Paul would say. Now, the frustrating thing was that as I studied for this, I didn't see anyone coming to the same conclusion that I did on this passage, and it kind of shocked me a little bit. When that happens, I always want to double-check my work and see if I'm missing something. But this seems very obvious to me. Maybe it's so obvious that others have just passed over it, but I think it's worthy to say. A lot of people in this passage of Second Chronicles chapter 10 begin to talk about taking the right advice. And that's what their sermons and their lessons are all about, is make sure you're taking wise counsel and taking the right advice. And that's good advice. That's a good message to have. But it misses the ultimate point of this passage. Rarely did I see anyone talking about seeking the Lord. That's the thing that Rehoboam didn't do. As long as he was focused on the counsel of men, whether old men or young men, he was going to fail. And of course, God knew that he was going to do that because God knew his heart. God knew that the heart of Rehoboam was cold and far from him. You might notice that there's no condemnation stated for Rehoboam in chapter 10 when he chooses which counsel to follow. But at the end of his life, in chapter 12, verse 14, we read, And he did evil. For he did not set his heart to seek the Lord. That was the sin of Rehoboam, not seeking the Lord. This is David's grandson. The Psalms are full of David's crying out to and seeking the Lord. But just one generation removed, even with his father being the wisest of all men, he failed to pass on the most essential truth to his son, that above all else, you seek the counsel of God and his word. Solomon couldn't pass this on because David didn't pass it on to him. How quickly a mighty kingdom can fall to ruin if we simply stop talking about the faithfulness of God. All of Rehoboam's trouble is tied to his disobedience in not seeking the face of God. The two times that he does listen were when he was saddling up for war and Shimeiah shows up and tells them to stand down and go home because, quote, this thing is from me, we're talking about God, and when Shishak is attacking Jerusalem and they humbled themselves and said, the Lord is righteous. And in both of those cases, things went well for Rehoboam when he sought the Lord and obeyed his command. And we see also here in this passage what happened to the Levites. We talked about them yesterday a little bit as we were dividing up the different tribes into north and south. We see here that they all left the north. That they were expelled by Jeroboam and they came to Jerusalem, which means that the kingdom of Judah is now made up of the tribes of Judah, 
Benjamin, Levi, and Simeon. So when the Levites show up, they actually keep Rehoboam and the kingdom heading in the right direction for three years. But soon, Rehoboam is back to doing his own thing, and he follows in the footsteps of Solomon. He takes many wives and concubines, and so God sends Shishak of Egypt to plunder Jerusalem. And all of that gold that made Solomon seem so great is now gone. So the big message written across Rehoboam's life is, don't be foolish. But it's not, don't be foolish and take the counsel of wise men. Instead, as Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. It's not that he leaves us. We leave him and we get further and further away in our sin and disobedience. Yet he's not far from any one of us. But we must turn to him in faith and trust his word and obey him. I pray that you have done that today. Also, one final note as we begin reading through these kings of Israel and Judah. It might be helpful to make a chart or at least have one on hand that shows the timeline. For instance, we have already seen that after Solomon died, the nation split and Rehoboam ruled over the south for 17 years. But Jeroboam ruled in the north and reigned for 22 years. These two timelines are going to be running along in the books of 1st and 2nd Kings and 2nd Chronicles. Chronicles is going to be focused much more on Judah as we go, but I've included a video and a PDF timeline map through the kings in the show notes that should be a helpful companion to you as you read. If you don't know how to get to the show notes in your particular podcast app, you can Google the instructions or you can go to our homepage at anchor.fm slash daily Bible reading and all the notes will be there on each episode with links for ways to join our community and join in the discussion. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this has been encouraging to you. If so, please let me know by visiting the links that you find under the Connect With Us section in the show notes. I'm a simple man, and I could use the encouragement. If you've been blessed enough that you would like to support the podcast, I would greatly appreciate that as well. You can go to buymeacoffee.com slash DBR podcast to make either a one-time gift or to sign up for a monthly recurring membership gift. Until tomorrow, keep reading and keep worshiping.